Hello and welcome to the Talking Locks with Locative Podcast. My name is Adi Balogu. <laughs> well, we're going to be coloring Mia's hair, so I'm sure I can hear myself. I can hear the gloves coming off the paper and all of that background noise. But as you already know, this is chair combos. So I do have my clients in the chair and we're going to have conversations that make us happy while we're getting our hair done. Uh, so Nia, let's get to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> okay, let's make it easy. How long have you had your locks? Um, I started my locks in 2020. So oh. April 2020. And uh, I started like instant locks. Um, and they were probably like... I don't know, this long, so like two inches or something like that. And but um, Nia's hair is like down past her <laughs> brass bra strap right now. So you do have crazy growth. Well, shout out to my daughter because <laughs> <laughs> the prenatal pills definitely worked because they weren't this long before I got pregnant. So, okay, so April of 2020, that was like the beginning ish of the pandemic when everybody was trying to figure yep. out what's happening and what's not happening. Yep. And what made you make that decision at that time? Um, I kind of battled with the decision of if I wanted to get locks, um, like for probably like 10 years before that, really. Um, and then I just, I don't know, I just woke up and I guess I was bored because we was in a pandemic and I was like, oh, I guess I'm ready to do it. Yeah. And I found someone who came to our house to do it. So it was like really nice and like convenient. So. How did you like the feel of the instant locks when you did it? Um, it was good. It felt like actual locks. So it was, I mean, it was all my hair, so I didn't get like extensions or anything. Um, but it felt like my hair, it felt like locks and it was kind of like the quote unquote easy way out. So I was like, <laughs> all right, we got to do that. Cause I didn't want to go through like the, the ugly, ugly stage. stage. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I'm, mm, 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 we skipping that. <laughs> so for those of us who are the originals, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Locks are locks, regardless of how you get them. The only thing is the instant locks take some time. Yeah. And um, I only do things I love. So <laughs> if you wanted me to crochet your locks right now, I wouldn't be the one for you. So I'm happy palm rolling your hair. And your hair actually looks great. Thanks. Okay, so today we're getting your hair dyed kind of like a ash blonde. Mm-hmm. Um, why Why are we dyeing your hair? Why, why do you want this color? Um... I don't know. I used to go, like, before I had locks, I used to go, like, crazy with my hair colors, like, red, and I just used to go wild. Um, but, like, the tips are, you know, brown or whatever from, like, a previous dye that just grew out over time. But um, every once in a while, I like to dye my hair, and, and I don't know why I usually go, like, lighter brown or whatever, but... Well, I, I think it suits your skin tone. Yeah. So that works. Yeah. All right. So, Nia, you are a recent mom. Yes, I am. Uh, how was that whole process of bringing life into the world? Um, the pregnancy, I guess we'll start there. Um, the pregnancy was cool. Um, overall, I think I had a good pregnancy. The first trimester, I literally was dying. Like, You had a morning sickness and everything? Yeah, morning, afternoon, night. They call it morning sickness. They should really just call it sickness because it it happens all throughout the day. Um, I couldn't walk my dog. It was just, it was horrible. Like, I couldn't do nothing. Um, Second trimester, it got much, much better. I felt, like, energized. I was able to do things. And then the third trimester, I kind of just got really lazy because I was... Like, I'm a small person, but I had a really big belly. And um, it was and she's all your baby. First. Yeah, yep, all baby. And she was like eight pounds and 13 ounces when she was born. So, like, yeah, she was a big baby. And that was kind of that. But um, labor, like, labor and birth uh, was like a total of 11 hours, which they say is quick, but it ain't felt quick at all because I was in pain. But <laughs> um, overall, it was cool. It was good. I had. Um, like a birth center birth. So I went to like the birth center, had a midwife, a doula, a birth assistant. Um, and my goal was to have like a water birth in the water, but I ended up having my daughter on the bed, but I got into the water twice. So that was cool. Okay. Um, Is there any particular reason why they opted not to do the water birth? 
Um, it wasn't that I, uh, okay. So like <laughs> during my birth, I, uh, when I first got there, I didn't think that, or the midwife didn't think that I was actually in labor. She thought that I was, um, just stressing out and like anxious or whatever. <laughs> so she actually, I went in so that she can check my cervix so that she can give me, um, like a pill that will like kind of calm my system like calm me down because I was like freaking out and I like Had I was in pain. Water I was kept broken. Falling. My water had broke at the beginning of my um, like that's how I knew I went into labor, which it doesn't happen to like a lot of people. You're welcome. Um, but yeah, so like my water broke in that night at ten thirty or eleven thirty, and um, basically. Um, I like kind of kept calling the midwife throughout the night and stuff like that. I couldn't really sleep and things like that. So she thought I was just being like anxious as first time mom. I got there. She checked my cervix. I was five centimeters dilated. Ooh, yeah. you're ready. Yeah. So she was like, oh, we're going to check you in. Like, <laughs> no, we, you here to stay. I was like, okay. And then she got like the water ready. My doula, oh, they told me to call my doula and tell her to come. So we did that. She was already there. And then the birth assistant, which is like, the nurse to the doctor in the hospital setting, we called her and she came. Um, so, okay. okay, I have questions. Yes. Excellent. What is the difference between a birth center birth and a hospital birth? Um, well, I guess the birth center is like no medical, like medical staff, like they're midwives and they're like medical professionals, but they're not, um, nurses, doctors. Yeah. Like they're not like doctors and like nurses, like they could go, like they have the, the education to go and like work in a hospital if they wanted to. Um, but it's like the more, I guess, non-traditional, tradi- I, I personally think that going to like a birth center, having a, um, Home birth is a traditional way of birthing um, a child. Yeah, like birthing your child. But um, in this society, I feel like they don't see it that way. So it's like, I guess I would call it the non-traditional, traditional way of doing things. But um, you purposefully opted for a birth center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, are you going to ask me why? Because I was about to start. Yeah, yeah, tell me, like tell this. me. Yes. <laughs> um, so... Um, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one, when I thought of myself giving birth, I never thought of myself giving birth in a hospital um, because I don't honestly, if I'm honest, I don't really trust hospitals and I don't really trust doctors, especially being a black woman. Um, I think that like I've been in the hospital for like regular things and I'll be like, hey, I'm in pain about this. And they would just literally ignore me. So I'm like, yeah, no, I don't want to give you know, I don't want to give birth a life, like literally you can die in labor. And, um, yeah, I didn't just didn't want to give birth at a hospital. Um, and a lot, and I understand like some people, they'll say, well, you know, if something goes wrong, like you're in the hospital setting already, it's good, whatever, whatever. But for me, like something going wrong was really never like a thought, like I thought about it, of course, but I wasn't, I don't know, like, they say, like, don't have a plan B or your plan B is going, like, you're going to have to go. your plan A. Yeah, exactly. So it's, like, kind of like that thought process. Like, my only plan was for me to go to the birth center. Of course, when you do that throughout in your entire pregnancy, they're evaluating you. They're not just, like, oh, you're going to have a birth center birth. No. If at some point during your journey they feel like You'll they be better see something. Off in the hospital? Yeah, they see something in your ultrasound or something like that. Or, you know, if... If things become um, like risky, they're not going to take the chance either to, you know, have you birth at their center. So they'll send you to the hospital, or whatever. And so you kind of plan for that as well. But my thought process was like, if I'm healthy and if all is good, I'm having this baby at this birth center. So yeah, makes sense to me. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what the dwellers? Uh, Role. role is in mm. this journey mm. and how is the daughter different from a midwife and the, like <laughs> what did you call them the, the nurse assistant says yeah the, the birth type, assistant the birth assistant mm-hmm. like is that just a personal birth assistant is she someone to he or she someone to just 
cheer you on while you're having the baby. So the um, so a midwife is the medical professional. Um, the birth assistant is a medical professional as well, yeah. but they're more like nurse to doctor. So the midwife will be equivalent to the doctor that's actually going to help you like get your baby out and stuff like that. The birth assistant is like the nurse. So like during the time, like when I, excuse me, at the birth center, they had to take like, um, like a kind of play by play, like almost every minute during my birth, like what was happening. Um, and so like that was were they the birth. telling that to you or no, they were writing it down. They're okay. transcribing okay. it into their notes. Um, Okay, so Which, it's like, all I got... very professional. It's yeah, not yeah. just uh, old African lady in the back of a box. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. We... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely very professional. It's very um, thorough. They definitely do, like, a really great job. Um, so shout out to my birth assistant. <laughs> hey. um, but, um, yeah, so the birth assistant is, like, the nurse. And, um, yeah, she just does what, like, the nurse thing does like whenever after my baby was born born she was the one who taught me how to latch my baby on um and things like that the doula is um someone who is more like emotional support um and just support in general for the family um and that goes throughout your entire pregnancy. Like, I saw my midwife throughout my pregnancy just like I would, like, my OB yeah. if I went to the doctor. So you actually don't have an ob throughout all of this? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to your midwives, yeah. I mean, you can, like, if you have an outside OB, you can go to them, but it's really no point because they're going to... The same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing. You do the same thing with them and um, as you would, like, your midwife and stuff like that. So for my... Um, my doula was someone who, <coughs> excuse me, um, who I wanted, um, like I wanted a doula because I wanted like that extra support. She was someone who, if I had a question about birth, um, like I could text her at any time of the day or call her any time of the day and she would answer. Um, like, for example, like I called her one time because I was very uncomfortable sleeping on my back. And um, I was told that, you know, you're not supposed to sleep on your stomach during during when you're pregnant. Um, once you become like like a certain size. number of weeks. Yeah. Like a certain size. And my doula was like, no, that's not true. She was like, as long as you're comfortable, you can sleep on your stomach. The moment that you become uncomfortable because your baby will tell you if they're uncomfortable, they'll kick and like do things like that then you'll know, like, okay, no more sleeping on my stomach. And so it's, like, questions like that that, like, my doula was there to answer for me um, during pregnancy. Um, and then she was a great, like, coach throughout, um, like, my birth. Like, she, we did, um, like, spinning babies. It's, like, a technique that um, a lot of people, a lot of pregnant people, not just, like, people who do uh, births and births, but... A lot of pregnant people like learn about they, if you do like a birthing class, you learn about like spinning babies and stuff. What, what does that mean? It's just it, that's a I think it's a company, but they just talk about like different ways to ease like your birth pains. So okay. like different techniques, breathing techniques. To, yeah, breathing techniques, certain things that you can actually do throughout your pregnancy to help like your baby um, to help your birth be smooth as smooth as possible. Um, and that's for hospital and or, you know, birth center birth. It doesn't matter. But um, so we did like a lot of that during my birth. Um, she bought she gave me like this little peanut ball. It literally was in the shape of a peanut that I slept with, like between my legs, like okay. helped me, you know, like spread my hips and things like that. She gave me like um, different teas, like okra tea and okra water and um like raspberry leaf tea that helps with like um, when it's time for birth, like just having it so that your baby can just come out a lot easier than, you know, I guess you they know? would if you may not have taken that. So a doula is just there to support you um, and your family. She was there um, for any questions that, you know, my spouse had. And, um, you know, they were the two in the room, my spouse and my doula, they were the two in the room that was um, really, like, physically helping me. Like, she, you know, she knew certain things to do and things like that that would help, like, 
ease my labor pains, really. So not that it always helped because of <laughs> the contractions. It's labor anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, like the contractions is going to contract, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's that's actually quite interesting. And um, do you know, in your experience, it sounds like the doula was a very personal interaction. So it's not mm-hmm. like you have group doulas where you have maybe three, four pregnant women and you all are like seeing the same doula. Because I would imagine in the traditional setting, sorry to cut you off, uh, mm-hmm. you have like antenatal classes where they start to teach you some things and mm-hmm. some techniques. And if I was going to liken it to maybe what the doula does, maybe do you, is it like a group or do you know your sounds very personal yeah so like usually you get a do so I did do a birthing class and during the birthing class a lot of the time the teachers in the birthing class they are like midwives or doulas or something like that they have that um they have that experience typically um like in the classes however like my experience with like my doula was very personal. Like she had other clients, but when it came to like me and like my family and things like that, and being there during the pregnancy, during birth, and then even after birth, um, you know, it was very personal. It was very one on one. Like, and after this experience, if you were going to do it again, would you use a doula? Yeah, I would. I would probably not do it again, but. <laughs> Because raising babies is hard. Um, but no, if I were to get pregnant again, I would do it the exact same way. I wouldn't change a thing. Okay. All right. That sounds good. That sounds awesome. So <laughs> what's so difficult about raising babies? You just have them. They're cute. They run around. They make you smile. What else do you want? Yeah, they do. They do all of that. And honestly, if I'm being completely honest, like my baby is like literally the happiest baby ever. And I'm not just saying that because I'm her mom. Like everyone says that about her. Like, She's so happy. Like, she rarely cries. Like, she's just amazing. So, like, she does really make being a mom easier. But it's, like, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, you just, like, being a parent is hard. Like, you just... You have a whole other person. Yeah, like, you have someone that you're responsible for. You just, um, you know, you got to come out your pocket with (laughs) <laughs> More money, you know what I'm saying? You got to always think about them. You can't just get up and go whenever you want. Um, and me, like, I'm a very, like, intentional parent, and I try to make sure that, like, um, you know, I'm just there for her in certain ways. Um, How old is she now? She's 10 months. Okay, all right. Yeah. You're a very new mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you already have, like, a one-year party planned out? What you oh, for do? sure. I'm a planner. I'm a planner. <laughs> we're, we're going to the... Um, Leesburg Animal Safari. I'm excited. Okay. So, okay. Yep. All right. I just learned something new. Now I know <laughs> there's this animal safari in Leesburg. Yes. So that's just around the corner. So. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. That's cool. <laughs> well, speaking about trips, I know you did mention you went on a baby moon mm-hmm. when you were pregnant. Mm-hmm. What is a baby moon? A honeymoon for the baby? Yeah. So basically, it's a honeymoon for the baby. So it's like, well, it's not really for the baby. It's to, it's to celebrate the fact that you guys are, like, expecting, but it's also to kind of focus on, like, this is probably the last time that we're, it's just going to be the two of us. Like, okay. you know, so, like, in a couple of months or whenever you, you know, I went at around six months, I think, because at seven months, I think they recommend not flying or something like that. So I went around six months, and, um, yeah, it's really just a time to, like, Focus on YouTube to have some relaxation, to just enjoy each other's company before the baby comes. Because, you know, after the baby comes, your life it changes. It's forever changed. So, uh, yeah. Okay. It's How was that trip? Um, it was really good. I um, Where did you all go? We went to um, Puerto Rico, Ponce, Puerto Rico. Um, it was very relaxing. Um, yeah, it was, like, pretty chill. It was... We were, like, immersed in the, like, in their culture. Like, we stayed at a resort, but the resort was, you know, like, the moment that you leave at a resort is not like, um, like, you're in, you know, their place, Mm -hmm. like, in their city. And so we tried a lot of, like, local food that was really great. Um, And, yeah, it wasn't, like, super touristy. Like, it was about 45 minutes outside of San Juan. So it wasn't super touristy, which... um, I enjoyed and I just got to relax and 
enjoy the resort. And we went off the resort a lot. And we just got to enjoy their culture. It was really cool. Okay. All right. That's one for the books. So, all right. I yeah. should get my spouse to start setting money aside for whenever we're going to have a baby moon. Because yes. now I know. Yes. I'm in the know. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. <laughs> so, um, you did decide intentionally to have your baby outside wedlock. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Why? Um... I, so one, I'm not religious. So the idea of having a child out of wedlock, like being a sin, like the Bible would talk about or whatever, is not something that I care about <laughs> because I'm not religious. Um, and really, um, I don't know, I struggle with the idea of marriage. Like, like of course, like growing up, you see the... Um, Cinderella's and things like that and they find their prince charm charming and stuff like that so like you like as a young girl you're like oh yeah that's exactly what I want to do and as I got older I'm like yeah no I don't think I want to really get married and then I met like my spouse and I was like like I wanted to get married but not like I wanted to get like I was okay with getting married like but just as in the wedding, like the wedding, the ring, and like, we don't have to sign no paperwork. Like, because I just feel like I've seen personally, like so many, um, well, not so many, I've seen a few ugly divorces and I've seen a lot of people who are married who are not like what I would picture as being married. Like they don't, they don't act married. They're just married to say that they're married and that's kind of it. There's no real, at least in my opinion, like love between them. I just think they're just, they're just, they just coexist. <laughs> so what I'm hearing you say is that first, there's no shame in not being married and having a child mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. And the concept of the marriage itself is not something that you felt is binding because of how mm-hmm. many marriages tend to turn out, especially yep. in 2024. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, yep, exactly. And I think that um, now that I have a child, I I don't know, I'm struggling with how I actually feel a part of me um, want to get married because I, I think that um, it's important, you know, like, and it's important not because of religion, but more so like when you're married to someone, say if like something happens to my spouse or something happens to me like right now, like we're not married, so we're not going to have any say-so in what happens. And I'm like, I've been living with this man for six years. What do you mean? I can't, you know, like, his mom would have the say-so in what happens. Like, I kind of experienced that, like, with my sister. Like, you know, like, if you're not, if, like, not being married, like, you don't really you have, have You don't have certain legal, rights. Yeah, you don't have legal rights to that person. Um... But yeah, so it's something that I struggle with because... But what about common law marriage? I think that's something, right? Where yeah, you've... but I think it's it, it's state to state. Oh. And Do you so know how, what, how it works here in Virginia? I don't. I think I've Googled it before. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think Google said that um, they abolished common law marriage previously. It used to be a thing, but now they don't. I think in Maryland it's still a thing, but... I'm not 100% sure. Uh, that's interesting. That'll be good information to know. Yeah. To see what, because it's kind of a little bit redundant if people have been together for a very long time. Yeah, I agree. And you can show that you lived at the same address. You mm-hmm. technically should have some rights if anything were to happen to that person, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. I think that would be fair. I okay. would agree. Okay. All right. And no regrets so far with no. that decision? No, I think I think the only thing is that um, not a regret because it's um, I don't know. I believe that anything is possible. (laughs) But um, I think that now since becoming a mom, like um, and my child having her dad's last name and like I'm the only one in the house who don't have that (laughs) last name. It's, It's very like. 
I'm like, huh? I don't know. Like, it kind of makes me think about it a little differently. I I wouldn't say regret, but... Yeah, um, something to think about. Yeah, like, just something that's on my mind and something that, like, bothers me a little bit. But, yeah. For everyone who's listening, I know on this particular episode, there's been a lot of background noise, gloves moving... Uh, things <laughs> coming undone, <laughs> but I promise this is kind of going to be the last of that. But <laughs> hey, it's a chair combo. We're live in the salon, so those things actually <laughs> do happen. This is the reality yep. of being at Lockerty. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the name is just a name, though. <laughs> um, but but I I get you. I I understand that sentiment and oh. You could possibly, there might be other ways around it. Because you could change your name if you wanted. I don't think you can. You can't? I don't think you can change your last name. You can change your first name, but you can't change your last. Unless you get married. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense now. Yeah, Yeah, you can change your first name. And that's actually something that I Googled like two weeks ago. (laughs) That's because Google. I'm like, there had to be a way around That's this. That's what Google said. Why can't I just <laughs> change my name if I want to? If I want to have my, I want to have my baby's name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, but Google said you can't change your last name. You can change your first. But do you ever think of maybe hyphenates, hyphenates in her last name, your baby's last name, so it's yours and and his? That's so funny. No, um, and um, one so like. When I was born, I had my mom's last name. And my mom passed away when I was almost three. And when my dad got custody of me, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, It happens, I guess. Um, So when my dad got custody of me, he changed my last name. And so my, when I was younger, I wanted to get, have like a hyphenated last name or whatever. But I'm actually happy that it didn't happen. And I think it's just a, I don't really like hyphenating names. Yeah, I think so. yeah like I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't know. It just doesn't sit well in my spirit. So I'm happy that I didn't do it and I would never want my child. And it's not about her having my last name. It's about me having his. So I think that's the difference also. Well, he's going to have to marry you now if you're mm-hmm. listening. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> And since you had the baby, how's it been like maintaining all the things that you used to do pre-baby? So you had mm-hmm. baby moon, yeah. where it was you and him having that time for yourselves. But what's happened to all the other things in your life before? Um, it's It's been um, challenging, I would say, because, um, like I said before, like you can't just get up and do like whatever you want to do. So like going now and like just being like oh it's a Friday I want to go somewhere and like I don't have you know like I want to go somewhere on that day like I can't do that really like well I can because he's there but then it's like I don't know kind of, it. yeah I feel like you have to plan because you have to be considerate of Are you each other's times and, yeah I am okay. yeah so I have to make sure that she has enough milk she's older so she doesn't drink like a lot of milk now she's she eats solids solid food but um, she still like her milk. So like in order to go to sleep, she needs to drink milk still. Are you committed to like breastfeeding for a long time? Um, I am committed to at least a year and a half. At That's first, a long time. Yeah. At first I was committed to a year, but she's 10 months now. And I'm like, okay, I think I can go to a year and a half now. Oh, do you think it's more about you than her? Breastfeeding. Yeah, because I, I don't I, I haven't been a mom, but I mm-hmm. feel like when it's time to wean babies off the breast, a lot of moms struggle. And they kind of go like, oh, she just wants it. She disturbs me every night. And I'm like, is it her or is it you who doesn't want to detach from this child um, that you have? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think, <clears throat> I think, well, one, I've never really thought about it, but given that you just asked the question, I think that um, it's definitely one, it's easier um, throughout the night because you can just pop a boob in her mouth. That's one. Um, Two, I think personally, I think my decision to continue is just the fact that I'm producing milk. And so because I'm producing milk, I think that it's a natural thing to breastfeed. I think that... um, But you know you're never going to stop producing 
No, you will. Well, I know someone who's breastfed to like four and was still breastfeeding. Yeah, I think you can. I think it's up till five. You can. Oh, then it stops. Yeah, yeah. Your body will naturally stop. I think. Um, I would have to double check my doula, but <laughs> I think it's up until five. I'm not going to go that far because, <laughs> girl, you're five. Get off my boobs. I, yeah. I need them back eventually. I'm but like, no child is going to be speaking full sentences. Of yeah, the absolutely. Of yeah, no, you're not. No, you can have a bottle. Like, if I pump like that, that's okay. But I actually have it. But no, for me, I think it's like a um, a healthy thing. And if I'm a, a, not a healthy thing, a natural thing. But if I'm being honest, like, they're... Um, she sleeps through the night, like, pretty well, um, especially if she doesn't sleep with me, but that's another story. <laughs> if she doesn't sleep with me, she is. Uh, she sleeps throughout the night. If she's sleeping with me, she... She's going to want it. She wants it, and I think we talked to the pe- pediatrician about it, and they said it's just because it's habit, and right now she's not getting the boob just to drink the milk. She's not hungry at night. It's just habit, so um, once she starts sleeping by herself, which... Fingers crossed we're going to start that soon. Um, she'll probably not Stop. be on the boob at night, which is fine with me because, no, I, I want my boobs back. I, really, <laughs> I, pro- I want them back. Like, I am tired of wearing breast pads. I am I, I want them back. When, <laughs> when I don't pump or she don't eat off of them, they hurt. I, I want them back. It's not a me thing. It's a, I'm just trying to do what's best for my baby. And the moment that I don't have to... Oh, we're going to put some cabbage on these bad boys and soak them all up and they're going to be dry. It's going to be great. Oh, well, tell me about that. Is that what happens? Yeah, I don't think it's cabbage. I think it's actually lettuce. I think um, if you want your boobs to um, stop lactating, stop, yep, stop lactating, you put, um, you wear lettuce, like leaves of lettuce in your bra and um, they will dry on up and it will stop. Wow. The things I learned from you, my clients. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting, honestly. Okay. It's pretty interesting. All right, I just learned something completely new. I don't think I'd have let that one in a while. So yep. let's just a cabbage, one of the two. We just have to confirm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. That seems pretty cool. All right. I know you did start a business. Yes. What does it feel like being an entrepreneur? Um, <laughs> it feels like I need to start over. No. Um, so I started, uh, Miracle Wear in honor of my sister, Miracle, who passed away in 2021 of COVID. I'm so um, sorry. Thank you. Um, and, um, I really have kind of put my business on the back burner now because, um, of, well, I'm a mom and, um, kind of financing your own business is a lot. It's an athletic wear company. Um, I'm going to be the next big Nike, but we're going to wait on that again. <laughs> That's what it's giving. Um, but yeah, so I, um, right now it's been a struggle just because of like motherhood and like the different like expenses that goes into that, that I'm not able to put into my business. Um, however, like I am like super dedicated to, um, relaunching and re like branding my business and marketing it better um because yeah something that I really want to do um in honor of my sister um initially like it felt great I guess to like you know do it the I guess quote unquote right way like get an LLC and you know make my own website and things like that um and like have closed or um, athletic wear to like sell it like felt great um but there's a lot of things that I think that I've learned about business with my first launch that I kind of took a step back in order to focus on like how to better mark how to better market myself um and my business and yeah that's something that I plan to work on this year in 2024 the rest of this year and Hopefully by 2025, we're going we okay. to see some miracle wear on the street. <laughs> well, entrepreneur to entrepreneur. I don't mind if we like pick our heads about that line of like miracle wear. And um, I think the foundation, I've been in business now for nine years. Mm-hmm. By June, June, July. Oh, nice. 
It'll be July will be nine years and ten nine years. Nine years. So okay. next year, twenty twenty five is gonna be ten years. It's oh, gonna nice. be big. Oh, Watch wow. out. It's yes. coming. Lagos, it. US. Yes. Ten years of Locketeer. Yes. Um, I love that. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I think that the reason I'm actually standing here over your hair having this podcast today is because of the passion mm-hmm. I have for this business. So what is your driving passion for Miracle Wear? Um My sister, um, she passed away of COVID in 2021, um, but really there were like a lot of underlying issues that she dealt with. So she had diabetes and she was obese. Um, And so I think that was really what like killed her, I guess. And that kind of sounds harsh, but um, prior to getting COVID in 2021, she actually became super dedicated to like losing the weight and things like that. And so, you know, she got herself a personal trainer and she was going to like dietitian, um, like meetings with like a dietitian to try to get her health in order. And I think for me, my why is my sister and it's um, important for me to make sure that her legacy lives on and to make sure that, you know, people know her name and to make sure that I'm doing something to honor her while also um, doing something that's beneficial to myself. Like, you know, like I'm a smaller woman, but just because you're small doesn't mean that you're healthy, right? And so like making sure that, you know, I'm hitting the gym and I'm, you know, prioritizing my health because at the end of the day, regardless if you're big or small, like that's the most important thing to prioritize your health. And I think that's my why. And well, I know that's my why in helping other people who may be struggling with weight loss or just their health journey in general is something that I would be happy to give to them because I felt like I wasn't able to give that to my sister. Okay. So, um, listening to you, your why feels like it's coming from a place of passion, there's reason, there's purpose and all of that. And one of the things you're doing with all of that is that you want to provide athletic wear. Uh, Is it, um, targeted towards a specific type of person or is it for everybody? No, it'll be for everyone. Um, It, like my first launch was very, um, it wasn't like a huge launch or whatever, but um, like my size, I went up to like 3X or 4XL. Um, But honestly, with my second launch, I plan to go up to like 5XL and to really like targeted towards anyone who's looking to be on a health journey. I don't care if you're a size small or a 4XL, you know, like just anybody. Okay. And what is your unique selling point? Yeah. I feel like I'm using business um, type English now. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what's, what's, the, what's unique about Miracle Wear? Why would I want to buy Miracle Wear over... Nike or Lululemon. Well, well, I would never buy Lululemon. It's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, like, the affordability. Like, I plan to be affordable. And then also, like, my why. Like, if you care about, um, you know, someone being passionate about something and someone's um, story, I feel like a lot of people relate to people and companies based on like their story and where they came from and things like that. So if you care about that, then you care about Miracle Wear. And it'll also be affordable. And it's going to be cute. It's not going to be dry. And it's not about to be $60 for a pair. Like, no shade to lose them. But <laughs> all I'm saying. Okay. All right. That that makes sense to me. Um, I'm in the service business, which is very different from the product business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't have literally that much experience. I have made some in-house products, mm-hmm. you know, mix some oils that I've sold from time to time, and I've never really taken it serious. So I wouldn't say I'm a product expert mm-hmm. or I have nine years of experience of selling products. Mm-hmm. I literally sell every now and again to whoever likes what I use in the salon, and I'm like, hey, yeah, you could get one. Mm-hmm. And some people are faithful. They call me from all over the world when they've used it one time so from the salon in Lagos, and then they, they come back. So... I I don't have the answers, but I'm just trying to talk through this business proposal with you. So you have the athletic wear. At this time, is that the only product that you intend 
intense selling. Yeah. And so is there anything unique about the fabric, how it makes you feel, besides it being cute? Uh, do you design the product yourself? Um, I will be designing the product. Initially, I did not, but I this time around, like with my second launch, I will be designing the product. And the difference is, like, a lot of times, like, um, bigger people will complain um, about the fact that, you know, you'll see something in a size medium and something in a size 3XL, and they're supposed to be the quote-unquote same thing, and then they look completely different. Or they don't really, they don't really cater to the fact that, like, bigger people have curves too. Like, you know, just because, like, you know, you're bigger, like, it's going to fit the same on a medium person and a 3XL person. You know, like, that's what Miracle Wear is going to bring. Like, it's going to definitely be quality fabric, and it's going to fit the same, and it's going to fit nice on a medium-sized person, 3X, 4XL person, because a lot of times, like, you know, they. I feel like even when you look in the store, like, you can go to, like, the junior section or the petite section or whatever, and then the moment that you go to the plus-size section, it looked like, a plastic bag, like why I get it? Why I gotta get the plastic bag? Like no, for real, like mm mm mm. So yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. And uh, you are in the gym constantly? I am not. <laughs> I have not seen the inside of a gym since before pregnancy. I cannot lie, but that's what I mean about marketing, and that's why I like I said that I put it on the back burner because I also. I don't want to just sell a product to be like, hey, I'm selling a product. I want to live the lifestyle of the product that I'm selling. So because I'm selling athletic wear, like I'm going to be back in the gym. I have not yet. I, I need to find time to fit that in my schedule. But right, we're talking about it. So once it has I, to once happen I start, now. Exactly. Once <laughs> I start fitting it in my, into my schedule and start working out. And that's one of the ways that I plan on marketing Miracle Wear through me working out in the um in the product, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Usually when people talk about athletic wear or the sort of business that you are in, nutrition is one of those things that mm -hmm. comes side by side with it. Mm -hmm. So are you particular about what you eat? Vegetarian, vegan, carnivore? Um, I am not particular about <laughs> what I eat right now, but again, like that goes into when I do get serious about like, rebranding and remarketing the business like I plan on getting serious like my spouse is a gym rat <laughs> he goes to the gym almost every day that's um, true is miracle wear unisex it will be okay. it will be there will be a men's section I think um I will start with the women's section and then as it grows um again like bringing in the men's section. So. so I actually see you on Facilia as somebody who likes things to be very perfect. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> so I know you have this vision in your mind, just looking at you and talking to you, there's this vision in your mind, there's exactly what you, how you want it, mm -hmm. there's a way you, I, I think you, you, I might be wrong, but there's a way you probably know what you want your lunch to look like, what you what wants to ha what's gonna happen in the first five minutes, what's gonna happen in the <laughs> Yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's me. I'm break. a planner. <laughs> yeah. Which is a good thing. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you to calm down. Yes. <laughs> I will try. Just start. <laughs> Nothing's ever going to be perfect. Nothing is ever, ever going to be perfect. So you're just gonna you're just gonna have to start from somewhere. So maybe it might be uh I have actually never launched anything I did mm -hmm. in terms of a business. Mm -hmm. So, and that's because <laughs> my spaces have been too ugly to even launch them mm -hmm. on the day I'm starting. Mm -hmm. And I believe personally in using what I have to be able to get what I want to get. So I never wait for the big, big picture. I never wait for it, everything to be perfect. And there are people in my life who are like, how are you going to open like that? I'm like, well, I'm going to get the hair done. Exactly. <laughs> There's a mirror. They can see their face. I could wash their hair. I don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. And as we, we kind of grow. So <laughs> maybe I should tell this story. It might be helpful. Uh, what year? 2015. No, 2016, actually, because I started a business in 2015. And I was renting the store. <laughs> uh, it was a small store in 
have I know you have no idea where this is, but Lagos, Nigeria, in Dolphin Estate, it was a very small store attached to like a bigger beauty store. And the lady had a space which she was using for a salon. So it was already kind of fitted into a salon. Mm -hmm. So it was easy. I just had to bring my I think she even had towels there. I mm -hmm. just I just you know, on day one I had everything I needed and I started the business. Um the rent was kind of high. We do not have 24 hours power in Nigeria. She was supposed to be providing me with power, but we kept on having clashes because when I had clients, she would not turn on the generator. I would be in a fix. Or if I had late clients, mm. she wants to turn off the generator and go. It was just all of these things. And I'd already prepaid for power. So there was a lot going on. But fortunately, I was only committed to that space for six months. So at the end of the <laughs> sixth month, I was like, yeah. So first, let's go back a little bit. In month one, I didn't even know if I wanted to do this. It was crazy. I am highly, and I say that not to brag, educated. There's no reason I should be doing hair in the context of how your education goes in Nigeria. There's no reason. You only do hair usually as a vocation. So when you do not have the opportunity to go to school and all of that, because mm -hmm. nobody really goes to cosmetology school, people do back home, but it's, mm -hmm. it's rare that you expect your hairstylist to have gone to some kind of school. Mm -hmm. You pick it up from your aunt, so you go to a salon and right. you're an apprentice that you learn. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't have been doing hair in the first place, but I had started writing this blog about a year before. People were looking for me. I left my job on a wimp and I was like, okay, I'm going to do hair. <laughs> I'm just going to try. I don't even know if anybody's going to come. Nobody knows that I do hair pretty much. Let's just see what happens. So I start the business in July. Yep, July is the second half of the year. So I start the business in July. Mm -hmm. I come into the space till December because, hey, what if it doesn't work? I don't want to be in a long-term right. lease. Uh, by September, I was so frustrated because... <laughs> I was taking out of my savings to pay the one staff I had. We barely had customers. I was insisting I wanted to do locks. Everyone was saying, I think you should do weaves or perm or anything else because mm -hmm. who has locks? So who's going to come and do their hair at yours? Mm -hmm. By December of that year, December 31st of that year, we were so busy that we walked till myself and Lara, the lady who worked with me at the time, we walked till midnight. We basically walked till the 1st of January 2016. Yeah. And in that moment, I was like, I think this is going to work. We need to move. But I had committed to this space for six months, spent a lot of my savings, uh, was barely making enough money to pay Lara, mm -hmm. talk more of surviving mm -hmm. on my own. And I'm thinking I need to move to a bigger space. And I need to get out of this arrangement where I can't even provide power when I need it. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> cut the long story short, I found a bigger space. Um, we closed, and since January of 2016, we closed traditionally for the first week of January uh, as a holiday. But the first week of January 2020, 2016, we closed because I did not have a space. Mm. so I was like yeah we're taking a break after the holidays but I was really trying hard to figure things out mm. we found a space maybe on the 7th of January and the first day we walked that day was the 9th of January okay. I had used and squeezed everything and borrowed some money up to the point where I wasn't even sure if I should be borrowing money anymore wow. to be able to get that space so we had moved from a space that was kind of like this mm -hmm. to a space that was about four times bigger <laughs> mm. I didn't have money to do the plumbing. Myself and Lara painted the place ourselves. Usually, that's kind of normal in America. In Nigeria, nobody paints anywhere themselves. The color paints are, they get it done. But <laughs> we didn't even do a good job. We just bought some white paint and because someone had moved out and there were like, you know, spots on the wall where they move stuff from. So we painted it ourselves and we just opened. We hadn't done the plum plumbing, so we had to put like a big bucket where you had the drain. So every time you wash somebody's hair, you physically had to take the bucket out to, oh, <laughs> to empty I, the... Empty yeah. the <laughs> mm -hmm. It was no way to start a business. But people came, people were understanding, 
people kind of somehow could see through the pressure I was under and appreciate the efforts. And slowly we have kind of built that space. And I'm so happy this space. We're still in that space right now in Dolphin, in Ikoi. But slowly we went from like really shady floors to one year making enough money to retile it, changing the ceiling, you know, and there's still a lot more that we could do to make the space nice. Actually, it's still not nice enough for me to launch it. Mm. And <laughs> it's nine years later. So I say all of this, I feel like I'm now the one on the podcast <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> to tell you my message to you today is it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. It might have, to, it might be actually just bringing one pair of miracle wear mm-hmm. here to sell to me and your business has actually started so Thank cool you. down I'll, count I'll, on the I'll perfection try. i'll try <laughs> it's, it's hard i feel like that's that's who i am as a person but no nope. i'll definitely try and even same thing for lucky to the u.s because i started up in 2021 oh my god it's 2024 already it was three years it was august of 21 <laughs> Fortunately, the salons here come kind of partially to give you everything, the basics that you need. You have a wash, wash head bowl basin, you have a, a chair, styling chair, and people do a lot of stuff with their space. But my first space was very bare. It just had three frames I bought for like $10 for three Michaels. <laughs> I love Michaels, by the way. <laughs> and I put them on the wall with um, the Velcro and the glue thing because I couldn't even afford for anybody to do anything with it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my spouse gave me this this lamp thing. He bought that for me at IKEA. Uh, we bought like the really basic stuff mm-hmm. and we opened. And I was in that space till last year, so almost two years, over two years. And I never really did anything with the space. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, we moved to Virginia and now the studio looks amazing. Yes, you know? I agree. It but <laughs> it's, taking, it's, it, it's taking some time and it's taking just working with what you have. So nothing's going to be perfect. Your kid is going to be growing. There's going to be more demand on your time. And uh, you might even add more babies. <laughs> Oh no, no ma'am. So fingers crossed. That so just, don't just do just do what it is you need to do. Yeah. Just right. do what it is you need to do so that we can keep Miracle's legacy on. Do you still have um athletic wear from the first launch? I do not. Oh, so it's all done. It's yeah, yeah. okay. But so yeah. you sold out. <laughs> you sold no. out. What are you waiting for? No, it's I need to I need to get more, like, better quality. But I will, though. I will. Uh, So, okay. All right. We'll be waiting for Miracle Wear to come up. Uh, Let's see. We've talked about it a lot already. We're coming up on the hour. (laughs) And it's actually time to get your hair to the next stage and not bother our listeners with like, water <laughs> and all of that stuff or the dryer because I think I want you to sit under the dryer for a bit so let's try and process a bit more but thank you so much no Nia. problem this has thank been a fantastic conversation <laughs> yes. and well maybe we'll do it again and yes. see the next time when Miracle Wear yes has you. launched <laughs> <laughs> no pressure just saying but we like <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Mia. Thank you well, for having me. <laughs> this has been the Talking Locks with Locktude podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Chair Convos. You can find our podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. I remain Adi Balugu and today we were with Mia. Have a great one and continue to keep it locked with an attitude. Bye.